Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is June 9th, 2020. It is 3.35 p.m. I am by myself. Can you tell? Sad. Uh, internet sucks this week. Today it is uh, quite bad. So bad that I couldn't even stream without dropping 70% of my frames. So I don't know what's going on, but the news has to happen because... It's news. It's the new. New is in the name. So we have to do it now because tomorrow it's going to be old. We don't do a show called Olds. It's news. So let's start off with one of the biggest stories related to streaming gaming because there's lots of big stories going on right now. Got to be specific. Let's start off with the DMCA thing that's happening. It's going to be so weird doing this without chat. I'm so sorry. But you know what? Sometimes, sometimes the show must go on even if it's just me by my lonesome. Uh, so... Start off with this tweet here that we got. Oh, I should extend that thing out. Ah, oh, it's too late. Uh, I can't because it's a horizontal monitor. A vertical monitor would totally work for that. But it's uh, anyways. So, uh, yeah, so uh, probably several days ago, June seventh. Uh, I seems like several days. Like two. Uh, I got. A, I saw this tweet that came across. Um, I think it was on Twitter or on uh, Reddit or something. Uh, even though I'm on Twitter all the time, somehow I miss this. Uh, and it says I've been issued two copyright strikes on my channel, both from clips over a year old in the past week, and told that if they find one more violation in my clips, my Twitch account will be perma banned. This is from Fusely, Fusly. Not quite sure, uh, but she has a check mark by her name, so apparently she's known enough to get some traction, which is good because sometimes we need that kind of traction in order to get something to actually happen. Uh, and so she says, I have talked with multiple Twitch staff, all telling me my best option is to delete all of my clips ever. On top of it being near impossible for me to delete over 100,000 clips, the creator dashboard isn't loading any of my old clips. How am I supposed to protect myself here? This is common amongst uh, a lot of creators. I haven't checked it myself because, frankly, if I get busted for some clip that somebody made two years ago, then maybe I just deserve it, I guess. Uh, I'll look into it another time, but right now, See, I'm willing to do anything to keep my channel, even if it means deleting all my clips and memories from the past years. I feel so helpless right now. I've built this channel up for five years, and to potentially lose it all so fast to something like this would be devastating. Uh, this is an issue way bigger than me. Content creators aren't being informed by Twitch on the proper steps to protect themselves from this happening, and there has to be a better handle... There's supposed to clap in between the words, right? Damn, messed it up already. A better handle to this than suddenly striking our accounts. I messed it up already. And banning us out of nowhere at Twitch supports. Four out of four. Yeah, I back her 100%. Twitch should absolutely do something about this. So this did finally, this actually did start to get some traction. Uh, it was uh, up obviously at the top of Reddit. Uh, it was getting lots of traction on Twitter. And uh, what we saw was a response from, from Twitch support, and they say that they are, this is the internet right here, <laughs> so loading a tweet takes a while, uh, that was actually pretty fast compared to what I was dealing with this morning, oh my gosh, this week we've had a sudden influx of DMCA takedown requests for clips with background music from 2017 to 2019, if you're unsure about rights to audio in past streams, we advise you remove the, removing these clips, we know many of you have large archives and we're working to make this easier, this is the first time we have received mass DMCA claims against clips, we understand this has been stressful for affected creators and are working on solutions, including examining how we give you more control over your clips yeah this is this is a this is a now thing this what wherever this was on the, on the whiteboard or in your sprint planning this is now this is now the number one thing that needs to happen because not only is this something that could potentially harm a lot of creators even some of your biggest creators because they have the most clips and so more opportunity to get busted uh but also this has not this this is potentially can uh do some kind of uh some kind of damage to twitch you know, th them being the ones hosting all of this illegal content. Uh, it says, we adhere to the DMCA, which requires that we take action on content and streamer accounts upon notice from rights holders, as happened this week. Our guidelines for music have not changed, so please reference them here. And so I do have that reference here. This is details on what kind of music can and cannot be played on Twitch, uh, which is going to be, I think most of it's pretty obvious. Don't play music that doesn't belong to you. I've obviously broken this rule a number of times, uh, especially with... My old friend, the Automaton. Yeah, I've done it all the time. Of course. How about 8-Bit Drummer? How about anybody that plays uh, literally any dance game? How about the karaoke the karaoke thing that Twitch was doing? Does that count? They probably cleared their music, honestly. Uh, but still, there's just, there's so many games out there. How about Grand Theft Auto? Ever turn on the radio in there and listen to music? Can't do that anymore. Because the license for music in games exists between two parties and you are not part of that. You ever heard the, this is an AB conversation, you need to see your way out of it. You ever heard that? 
That is basically what's happening here. The license for music is between the music publisher and the game publisher. And that's it. It is not for us to broadcast. That's not how it works. Uh, now, I am not a lawyer. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, but there are some lawyers who are coming out and saying, uh, well, they're, they're, they're basically saying, I'm going to pull this up here. Uh, this is a video game lawyer. This is uh, Morrison. We, we've actually had him on uh, uh, Internet Famous a long time ago. He said, Twitch did not change. The law did not change. Just the law we've been warning you about for years is now being enforced by record labels. You can be angry, but point your anger at the, anger at the right people. And please read the next tweet about fair use. So as he says, fair use is not a right, blah, 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 all this stuff, right? It's a defense. He, what he says is basically, what he's saying is uh, you you can use this as a defense if you were to be taken to court, but it is not something you could stand behind and say, I am protected by fair use. If that makes sense. Uh, he actually has another thread that just popped up right before I started uh, recording this. And he says, hey, wait, here it is. Uh, we wrote a guide on all the DMCA craziness going on. Don't listen to random people, random internet people, including myself. Uh, listen to lawyers. We will be updating this with more questions you all have. So please ask. And so he has this list here. I've actually not looked at this um, uh, before this stream. So uh, once once this super media heavy website downloads, <laughs> then we will uh, we'll read it. So it says by now you've all seen a scary four letters DMCA with a lot of conflicting information and context surrounding what exactly it means. So he's gonna go through and he's gonna explain a lot. I'll include this in the notes. Uh, I shall go and throw that in there now. Uh, I'll include this in the notes so that way you guys can go through and read some of this a little bit more in detail. But but it's true. Like listen to the lawyers. Don't listen to people like me. Don't listen to people like whoever you might find on the internet, except for. A course unless they're a lawyer uh listen to these folks they'll probably help you they'll guide you through it but this this still is a reactionary thing this is what do i do when i get dmca'd uh what is fair use all that good stuff right uh none of that applies to my point which is twitch needs to have a system that i don't know maybe like mutes clips the same way that they mute vods maybe maybe that's something they could just kind of like just kind of shuffle over right as a content guy i love saying that to developers it's like oh it's so easy just like take that same thing you built here and put it over here but i know that that's not true i know that it takes work i know that it takes time but if it's one thing that twitch has is people that probably know how the platform works and they could probably put some time and effort into making this happen so why hasn't it happened already? Maybe because they thought the clips were kind of kind of slide under the radars, I guess, for a bit. It's not like they didn't know that this was happening. Of course, you take a clip from a from from a from a vod that's been muted after the stream. Uh, it still has the audio in it. This occurs everywhere. Most everybody knows that. If you are clipping somebody like let's say Eight Bit Drummer, actually we'll go back to him, uh, or anybody that's played Just Dance or I don't know Dance Dance Revolution or. God, Beat Saber. God, there's so many. Uh, just basically any game that has any kind of audio soundtrack to it, period. That's not licensed to you. So uh, I guess we'll just wait until they uh, until they develop this thing and uh, deploy it to people. But uh, hopefully it's come soon because right now the workarounds that we have is... Well, like thanks to the gun run, uh, the gun run has a has a list of found an app that will download all of your Twitch clips, name each fi file by title and delete them from Twitch all at once. So this is pretty awesome. And this this I might actually do just to go through and archive everything and and just have that, uh, you know, in storage. I actually personally am somebody who would like I would like to actually keep all of my all of my recorded content, all of my streams, all of my everything because I'm a digital hoarder. But I've refrained from doing that ever since Twitch decided to uh, uh, remove all older than 90 day uh, highlights or or uh, vods. I decided to just, eh, just go and just let it fall off. But it sucks because sometimes there's stuff that I miss. You know, this is stuff that's like, oh man, I wanted to save that, but I didn't. So, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because I already running out of hard drive space all over the place. So, anyway, so this app is also gonna I'm gonna include this also in the uh, in the notes uh, to the uh, it's a link to the tweet. Uh, so that way you guys can give them the old boop. There you go. Show them your support. Uh, but yeah, no, this this thing should hopefully work. I know a lot of people are having issues with making this thing, uh, uh, not making this thing work, but you know, with trying to go through Twitch's own built-in system and deleting and removing things, it just wasn't really happening. Uh, so hopefully this is something that'll work. By the way, look at the quality of this. Because <laughs> you're wondering how my internet's running right now. God, it's so annoying. Um, but yeah, that is, oh, actually there is more thing to that. Let me go back to this. Uh, so, not wrong one. Uh, so, Noah Downs, who is uh, another copyright lawyer, I think he's a copyright lawyer, but he works with he works with video games, so he he works with I think not works with Morrison, but uh, he is another 
uh, internet lawyer what's, what's that we should be able to trust. Now, hopefully this plays. If not, I'll drop it down to a uh, uh, to a lower setting. But this was DJ Wheats uh, talking to uh, Noah Downs uh, on a podcast here. Important to note, and this is where your ten tinfoil- <laughs> Hold on, uh, it's, it's clearly going to be a problem. Uh, let's take off 1080p with 360. What's, what's interesting here and important to note, and this is where your tinfoil hats are going to come on, um, is that there is actually a company out there, and I believe I mentioned this to you yesterday, uh, there's a company out there that's monitoring most streams on Twitch, and uh, it's two big investors um, include Universal Music Group, and um, uh, I think one more. I forget what the other one is. Um, well, I think it might be Warner. Um, it is Warner. And so Universal Music Group and Warner have invested in this company that's monitoring every stream on Twitch. And they have the ability to issue live DMCAs. They just haven't done it yet. And so it's super important uh, to note that that level of enforcement hasn't even come through yet, um, where you're live and you're getting taken down live for playing music. Right now, we're just seeing clips and bonds. Um, what's what's interesting here and important? That was a perfect loop. I almost would have let it gone, let it gone for a minute there. So, uh, uh, as as he said, I won't I won't say exactly what he said. You guys heard it there. But uh, uh, there are there are groups that are monitoring stuff live, and they have the ability to shut down streams in real time. I look forward to that day because I would love to see. Amazon finally just say, you know what, fuck it. Maybe we should do something about how DMCA works and how copyright law works and whatever and put some of that money behind that. Maybe. That'd be kind of nice. I don't know. But, you know, taking on, I understand that Warner Brothers and Universal and all of these music groups are part of the big five or however many there are, probably three now. Uh, yeah, I understand that they're out there. You're trying to trying to make a buck <laughs> uh, any way possible. And if they need to DMCA stuff in order to maintain their copyright, copyrights uh and that inf- that actually infringes on other people earning and so it turns into okay maybe amazon says hey you know what fair use is a defense and we could use that and we're gonna win so if they win one case against against uh universal for example uh then they could say well now now we want to counter sue or something I, I don't know i just feel like they could take it to the point to where they could say we can win one instead of wasting our time going through the process and trying to dispute every single case or whatever against, you know, against Universal or whatever other music group, maybe they could put that money behind trying to make uh, DMCAs or just fair use and all that just make more sense in 2020. The law was written in like 1999 or something or 2000. I don't even know. Uh, but it was written a good while ago to the point to where it feels like <laughs> like maybe you could use a revamp. The internet is a very different place than it was back in American Online and Netscape and uh, and whatever else was around back then. Uh, e World, Jesus Christ, I was even older than that. It's it's just changed, and it needs something new. And what's currently running right now with the way that we make the way that we make content, we need something something to work i make music too and i understand that you know you want to have you really really want to have credits you want to get credit for the work that you do if it's being played on somebody else's stream i get that so maybe there's a function that could add something similar to how youtube does it whenever youtube has a video uh that has a song in it at the bottom it shows what that song is and you could click on it and go to uh, go to a page where you can watch other songs other videos related to that song or uh or uh, buy the song or whatever YouTube music or something is trying to convert you into paying uh, a viewer. Um, it's it's just a it's just an archaic system for the internet. You know, twenty years is a very long time. Like I said, so twenty years for one single you know standard to be upheld. It's time it's time for it to change. It really is time for it to change. So uh, I'm glad that this is surfacing again, but it's just happened so many times in the past where it's like, oh my God, DMCA, the music companies are out to get us. And I don't know. I even, I, when I first saw this, when, they, when I first saw that tweet and it said, I got DMCA, it's like, that's what happens when you play copyrighted music. And I myself do it too. And if I get hit, it's like, that's what happens. I play copyrighted music. That's what happens. It's just become such, it's become a thing that just happens all the time. You just kind of dismiss it as such. You're just like, well, I mean, it was bound to happen anyways, whatever. You know, I'll get my account back. I'll just, whatever else. I'll move somewhere else or whatever you want, whatever it is. I remember I used to make long ass videos, talk about copyright and all this stuff and what you could do to protect yourself in terms of like 
turning off music and games and all that so you can play without music uh or so you so you could not even risk getting nailed for you know, uh, uh, getting a dmca but i mean <laughs> at some point at some point we either got to got to ignore it <laughs> And never play music again, and then just let the labels be like, huh, I wonder why nobody's buying the soundtrack to this video game, or nobody's playing it on Spotify. Maybe it's because everyone's afraid to play music, so we don't know. Imagine playing No Man's Sky without the music when it first came out. It w there would be zero redeeming qualities for the game. <laughs> it would have just been like, wow, this game sucks, and I can't even play the soundtrack on stream. Jesus Christ. Uh, so... I don't know what we, what we could expect from that, but what I want to see is Twitch, at the very least, go through and mute clips that have music in them the same way that they do VODs. Uh, that should just be a no-brainer. Now, I don't know. I ho Hopefully, here's what, I'm, here's what I'm kind of expecting, and I hope this doesn't happen. Uh, I hope it doesn't get to the point. I hope it doesn't go out like if there is a detected song that would normally mute a section, a section of a VOD, uh, then it ends up muting the entire clip. Does that make sense? So, like, let's say if I stream for four hours, and at the beginning I play a song like, I don't know, Fuck the Police, okay? So I play Fuck the Police at the beginning of the stream, and then at the end of the stream, somebody makes a clip. And then that clip, now the VOD gets muted at the beginning, okay? Sure, that's not my song, but I played it. Uh, but then the clip, at the, the clip that was taken at the end gets muted as well. This is the kind of thing that you come to expect from companies. It's like, well, you did it, but you also did it wrong. <laughs> so I'm really... Desperately hoping that if they do implement something fast for muting clips or doing something with clips. Hopefully it's not, oh, now you can mass delete all your clips because that's fucked up. Then you're just like taking away content. Years of content. Imagine every big creator that has made clips that have made it to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, just having to delete everything because you might have, you might have some copyrighted music in there. Who's going to go through and filter through a hundred plus thousand uh, 100 plus thousand clips. She says she has 100 plus thousand clips. I've never heard of she was. Not. I'm not trying to say, oh, who's that, right? But seriously though, like if she has 100,000 plus clips and I don't know who she is, how many does Dr. Disrespect have? <laughs> how many does, does uh, Lyric have? How many does Summit have? Like these guys probably have millions of clips. So yeah, Twitch has to do something that makes sense and they have to do it now. They can't wait anymore. They have to do it now. Ah, uh, let's see. Moving on. A familiar face in a different place. You guys remember Jason Schreier. It's so weird. I'm like, you guys remember Jason Schreier, right, chat? Okay. So, <laughs> um, oh, God. Yeah, the site won't load now. This is great. So I was trying to show you that uh, our buddy... <laughs> Sites like all kinds of messed up claims. Uh, don't claim off. Uh, no, no, no. So they're trying to get me to to to, to subscribe. I'm not planning on subscribing to uh, uh, to to Bloomberg um, or any any one of these services anytime soon. Um, so it says game publisher cancels cancels contract with developer, then tries to poach his entire team. This is related to Take Two, Star Theory Games, and of course the beloved. KSP Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have played it. Uh, I've played it briefly. I was really bad at it, so I ended up just kind of signing off and just being like, nah, it's cool. I watch, I'll watch people make stuff, like Besieged. I love watching people make stuff, but I'm not the person to get in there and do it. I'm just not, that, apparently not that smart. Uh, so yeah, Jason Schreier is no longer working for Kotaku, by the way. I think we mentioned this on a new show. Maybe we didn't. Uh, he's now working over for Bloomberg, and he has a pretty, this is a pretty good article. He goes through and he goes in detail. See that image is loading? <laughs> he goes through in detail, talking about the, uh, about what's going on here, but I'm going to break it down for you guys. So, in December of 2019, uh, actually, no, let's go back to 2017. In 2017, Take-Two bought the rights to uh, Kerbal Space Program, uh, and then that was it. They basically, they, they allowed Star Theory, I think they, the name changed to Star Theory of Uber something because of Uber, the, the ride sharing service. They changed it from Uber to something else. Uh, and so they, Star Theory was working on a sequel. We saw the premiere of the, not the premiere, but a teaser of the sequel, I think last year. Uh, maybe it was E3 last year. Uh, and what is this? Okay, stop playing videos. Uh, you guys are going to kill my internet. <laughs> um, so they, they were working on, uh, uh, on Kerbal Space Program 2, KSP2. And in December of 2019, uh, they were trying to, one, Take-Two was trying to purchase, uh, uh, outright, trying to purchase Star Theory Games, and Star Theory Games obviously trying to sell. They were negotiating a deal, and the deal fell through. Now, this is not uncommon, right? They have a light, they have a, they have, um, 
a contract with Take Two to make a game that previously they owned. And, you know, they're, they're just going to keep on doing that. And maybe the company's just like, you know what? Uh, let's just buy the company. Like, instead of, like, actually, instead of contracting them, let's just buy the company. Well, they couldn't reach an agreement on this. And so instead of just saying, all right, cool, that's, that's fine. You know, Take Two decides to go. <laughs> to go the asshole routes, uh, and they started to message the uh, developers and staff of Star Theory Games, offering them, uh, let's see, cash sign-on bonuses, an excellent salary, uh, and other benefits to come and work for their new game company that is going to be developing a game called Kerbal Space Program 2. And you were wondering, like, well, hold on a second. How can we have two game companies working on the same game? It's because Take Two was so butthurt about not. Take Two, the $15 billion valuation uh, company, was so butthurt about this, about the small, small, small dev group uh, not selling that, uh, that they decided to poach not only the staff, but also the game itself. And so they uh, they terminated the contract with Take Two and or, we're sorry with uh, uh, Star Theory and they gave it to what was the name of the other company? Um, I guess it doesn't matter. How about we just call it uh, the Star Theory Re Refugees? So the Star Theory Refugees, it, which is now composed of, of quite a few staff, as a matter of fact, one third of the developing staff uh, was it one third or two thirds? I want to make sure because this is, this whole story is ridiculous. So yes, a third of the dev team and the creative director for Star Theory all moved over. Because why wouldn't they? This isn't. This isn't. This isn't a case of. Uh, this isn't a case of the employees being dicks, right? This is a hundred percent business. Okay, so yeah, they're gonna go where the money is because if they stay with Star Theory, they're gonna be done. Because Star Theory, the the founders got together with everybody and they had a meeting and they said, "Look, we have some money in the bank. What we want to do." is go to GDC and we're going we're gonna to pitch some of our game ideas and see what we can come up with and that way we could get some money rolling in because the only contract that Star Theory had was with Take-Two. And so without that contract, they have no more revenue. Well, unfortunately, GDC didn't happen because of the coronavirus. And so there goes the last bit, the last hope of uh, getting any kind of revenue in. Nobody's having meetings right now. No no. None of the none of the game conventions are happening right now. Nothing is happening. And so that kind of discovery that they desperately needed, and we talked about this, you know, when the coronavirus first hit and we were discussing, you know, all of the conventions shutting down, like these conventions are key to the survival for so many developers because they go to these places and they they hustle and they talk to people to their face and they get deals going to their face and they make things happen. Uh, but you can't do that right now because everything shut down. So because of that, they uh, they closed. And that was pretty much the end of the uh, of Star Theory. So KSP2 is going to continue to be developed by uh, Star Theory Refugees. And I guess whatever kind of control Take-Two has over their development, and I say that from the perspective of, you know, uh, microtransactions and just looking at how how uh, other Take-Two games work, okay? Like, for example, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, if we look at the way those games work with microtransactions, they make a boatload of money. So if we see KSP2 come out, or get you know more announcements start to to unravel, uh, and we start seeing things like I don't know online <laughs> or anything like that. You could probably expect to see some kind of extra monetary something uh, being tacked onto KSP. So is this the end of KSP in terms of like you know my precious? <laughs> uh, maybe because well I mean if Take Two is willing to just say you know what. Fuck those guys and just shut down Star Theory after a deal falls through again, fifteen billion dollars. Um, then who's going to stop them? What's going to stop them from just saying, you know, fuck the players too? Let's just go and throw whatever kind of monetary crap we could throw on there and try to make some money. Just monetize it, however you can. Who knows? Who knows? Obviously, we're, we're we're it's a bit of a stretch right now, but it seems like they already took one fucked up step. Probably, probably they're probably going to take another one. So. 
let me see let me see what's up next i actually was going to go through and organize this a bit more before the uh before the end of um before i started the i was gonna start the stream and then do some more organizing of the news and then come back on and then talk but we're just gonna we're just gonna barrel through it just just however i have it up here all right so next up destiny 2 destiny 2 has been getting a lot of love lately uh and they had an event they had an in-game event that was pretty uh that was pretty significant enough to actually hold i think like two or three uh top 10 trending in the u.s maybe worldwide for at least one of them uh the word bungie was trending earlier today bungie has apparently been doing a lot of really good things with destiny and i feel like destiny kind of goes like this it's like oh hype and then uh no content game sucks and oh hype and then uh no 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 no, no. it sounds like world of warcraft doesn't it? it's we're all used to this kind of stuff so this is pretty standard which means maybe if they're going through the same lulls and highs and, and lows that uh, that we experience in a game like World of Warcraft, which has the persistence of a cockroach, um, well, maybe that means that the game could stick around for a while. If people keep coming back to it, then that's a good sign, right? That means there's something there. Uh, and here's what I found. Uh, well, not my, but actually uh, Benji Sales found on Twitter. I'll take credit for it. That's totally fine. Uh, he says, Bungie is all in on supporting Destiny 2 for the long haul. Today, they announced three expansions, Beyond Light, The Witch Queen, and Lightfall, which will run all the way until 2022. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. Also confirmed, next gen Destiny 2 will run at 4K and 60 FPS. That is um that's a lot of power. Like, I don't know what the specs are or how games are going to run in the next generation consoles, but 4K 60 FPS, you guys all know that is a lot of power. Now, I have another tweet here that I want to pull up here. Let me see. Ah, yes, this is a good one, too. Uh, also from Benji Sales, he says, Seems very clear today's announcements have energized Des the Destiny community. Destiny 2 on Steam had 36,000 concurrent players uh, before today's stream announcing the future of the game. Now, up to, uh, up to over 162,000 concurrent players already and continuing to rise. Bungie hit a home run. And here is the layout the uh concurrent players and uh just a general data so you can see that uh for yourself actually have a if i could pull it up oh man where's it at where's it at no 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 nope 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 lost it uh so i did have a a data sheet here that showed um the popularity of uh of destiny 2 on twitch and it showed that they did have a massive spike and the last time they had a spike this big was October 1st of last year, which I think was an expansion. Um, the timing of that would, would say expansion to me, but I'm not quite sure. But anyways, yeah, I mean, they're, lately, Bungie's been hitting a home run with, uh, with Destiny in terms of announcements and, and whatnot. And also... And also uh, hitting a home run with uh, people who are support in support of, of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and, uh, and George Floyd. They actually had a... Uh, I guess, I guess it would be like a loading screen of sorts that popped up. And it said, 8 minutes, 45 seconds. This marks the time in which George Floyd was killed. Um, and so this is... Uh, uh this was, was played like in its entirety. Like it was, it was an actual like loading bar going across. There's a couple of images where you can see it's a loading bar going across. Um, uh, and that happened today, today as of, as of this recording. Um, and there's been a number of companies that have been you know, contributing to this and trying to raise awareness for Black Lives Matter and trying to do something to show their support. Uh, some of them have, uh, have, have kind of fallen flat, <laughs> uh, but others have, you know, have, have risen to the occasion. Um, some of them, like in this case, eight minutes, 45 seconds, they kind of, they force you to sit there and really think eight minutes, 45 seconds is a long time. It really truly is. Uh, and that's the reason why people want to it's the reason why that's a common theme. You know, you see, I think Spotify even integrated like eight minutes and 45 seconds of like no music or something during a certain time of day. Uh, there's been a number of things that, that people, everyone's doing something different and it's good. It's good. I'm glad that everybody's trying to do something to raise awareness. Some of them come across as a little, a, a little more fake <laughs> than others. It's kind of like they took a template uh, to, uh, uh, to it. Uh, this one, in this case, Black Lives Matter to honor the legacy of George Floyd today, uh, June 4th, 2020. 
uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be shutting down access to our online games, Grand Theft Auto Online and Red Dead Online. It says, following the memorial, we hope you will join us in further honoring the many victims of America's racial injustices by supporting their families, black-owned businesses, uh, those marching on the streets, and coalitions through the organizations listed here. The comments are about what you'd expect. Oh, it sounds like Chinese propaganda, but okay, look at this meme from 2017. Uh, some people in this comment section really need to grow up. It's just for two hours. Two hours! It's not like you can't play later. Wait a second, let me get this right. The makeup of a GTA series that glorifies drug dealing, shooting police, and cause violence honoring the legacy of George Floyd? <sighs> Uh, I love this too. This is my favorite. Time to unfollow my favorite game developer. Oh, it's fucking K-pop stand. Uh, this isn't an airport. This isn't an airport. No need to announce your departure. I love it. Love it. Uh, um, but going back to Destiny though, even the CEO actually took part in a CEO and some of the staffers. Uh, staff took part in some of the um, uh, some of the protests that were happening. So this is Pine. This is, I believe, if I recall, this looks like, and I feel like I've seen this corner from so many different angles. This is the corner. If you've seen any of the clashing going on in Seattle, more than likely it was this intersection here. Uh, and there's actually a couple of videos here where they are getting uh, actively gassed. Um, this looks like smoke to me. CS gas has a bit of a, uh, a green tint to it, but you will know for sure uh, depending on how people react you know like some regular smoke you'll cough because it's just something that's kind of interfering with your with your breathing um but cs gas will make you cough your lungs out and uh and cry and i mean just it's the word your sinuses drain so your boogers come all the way out like it's very clear the difference between smoke and cs gas uh, but but let 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 that not be me saying uh, that they're not getting gassed. They're absolutely getting gassed a lot uh, across uh, Seattle and Portland, especially. Um, just in this particular video, I don't see anything that to me reads as CS gas. As so you can see, you know, they are, uh, I mean, this is, this is effectively a police riot. <laughs> Uh, and they are, you know, they're scattering and this is, this is Pete Parsons. He's the CEO of Bungie and he's out there, you know, trying to show his support, uh, for the Black Lives Matter music, uh, movement. And you just hear explosions and, and all kinds of stuff. And it's just, it's just been, um, yeah, it's just, it's just been a mess. It really has been a mess. I've been following this, uh, the, the protest pretty much every single day since they started. Um, the only time I didn't tweet about the protests was, uh, uh, was Monday night because it was sub nights. And even though I did download some, I did have a clip that I was, I was going to post because I went to go see what happened. What did I miss while I was streaming? And of course they're gassing, they're gassing terror, uh, <laughs> They're gassing. I'll just say the terrorists are gassing. Uh, they're ga they're gassing protesters and just trying to like, clear clear off the uh, the streets in just the most uh, just the most ridiculous way. Um, anyways, so yeah, we're getting there's like lots of tributes uh, going all over the place. I'm gonna go and read. Let me read one of these to you guys. Uh, this one is uh, we are committed to fighting injustice by posting images on to Twitter that express our commitment to fighting injustice. To that end, we offer this solemnly white on black dot JPEG that expresses vague solidarity with the black community, but will quietly elide the specifics. Uh, this will, uh, the specifics of what is wrong what needs to change, or in what ways we will do anything about it. This is doubly true if Brand is <laughs> is particularly guilty of exacerbating those issues. We hope this action encourages you to view Brand positively without, you know, expecting anything from us. And this was, this was a, it's funny, this, this is just obviously a generic template, but I, I you have seen You've probably seen enough of these on Twitter to know that this is pretty on. This is pretty on brand. Uh, I actually compiled a list here. God, I really wish I could do this in front of uh, chat so we could go through this list together. So I sorry, I didn't compile this list. I I found this list of of tech and tech adjacent companies that have done something, made a statement, made a contribution, or whatever. Uh, I made a copy of it. Uh, because I don't know where it's going to go after this. Someone might just say, ah, oh, you know, we're just going to delete it or whatever. I made a copy of it and I added that to the, um, uh, to the comments or to the, uh, description. Anyways, in it, I've gone through and I've highlighted, uh, a couple of, uh, of, of, of game or game adjacent companies. So we see Activision uh, Blizzard, uh, with Bob, Bobby Kotick and they have a statement. I wonder what the statement says, actually. No, it's 23 me. Let me see. What does their statement say? Uh... Hey, look at that. <laughs> White text on black. Today and always, we support all those who stand against racism and inequality. There is no place for it in our society or any society. Black Lives Matter. 
Oh man. Uh, and then uh, Zarina, <laughs> Zarina used to be, she used to be an employee. As a matter of fact, if you, if you don't know who Christina is, um, Christina is Zarina, she uh, used to work for Blizzard. Uh, she worked on the Hearthstone team. Uh, prior to that, she was the monk. If you, if you remember a cosplay monk from like the 2013, 2014 era, give or take a couple of years, uh, that was her. Um, so she's been around Blizzard for quite some time and she was laid off during the 800 uh, folks layoff that they did last year i believe beginning of last year uh she was laid off and so she she has a she has an axe to grind and she has de she is uh she's deserving of that uh, of that right so she says donate to blm organizations donate to organizations that call for freedom for hong kong these words are meaningless without actions How, i'm glad she brought up hong kong because yeah wow it really does feel like that again right it's like today and always vague 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 vagaries vague 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 uh and that's pretty much it so i'm actually curious did they i i, I went through to highlight just the names did they make any kind of donation or anything let me see their gross revenue was 6.49 uh <laughs> this billion dollars and uh they didn't give any money okay so i guess it's, they don't have to give money they don't have to give money or anything um <laughs> let's see we're going to talk about Bobby in a second, by the way. Um, Caffeine TV made a statement as well. Uh, they made it on Instagram, as a matter of fact. Okay, sure. So, I mean, the trend of white on black makes sense because that is what the Black Lives Matter theme is. And so it makes sense that they do this. It's just a way to point out. I know, we, I know we're making fun of them by pointing out that the, all these things are very similar. Uh, but it's, it's, it's how vague they are about what they're going to do ultimately. Like, as a result. It's like, here's some fucked up shit that happened to people who are you know u.s citizens and around the world it's not just here um and it's been going on for a long time and most people turn a blind eye to it they don't do anything to support the people who are affected by this they don't do i mean they, they basically do nothing when they're in a position where they can make some kind of meaningful difference like for example a company that makes 6.4 billion dollars a fucking year okay EA, EA, oh, retweeted statement. Let's see what it says. Uh, <laughs> it makes it sound worse. It says, uh, an official statement from EA Sports. Tomorrow we have had com uh, we have committed to celebrating Madden NFL 2021 20 with you. Sorry, uh, but we're not going to do that now. We stand with African-American slash black community of friends, players, colleagues, and partners. Our immediate intention is on actions we can take to drive change, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so they go through, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it's just, you know, Put Kaepernick on the cover then, yeah, for reals. The NFL is the worst about that. <laughs> we acknowledge that it's, that it's too late for us to respond, but we're going to respond anyways, but we're not going to say anything about Colin Kaepernick. Oh, man. Uh, so, I mean, there's just a lot, and I, I encourage you to go through and see what what people or what companies have done what. Again, they're not obligated to give money to anything, uh, but when they're in a position where they can do something with that money, uh I mean, I just, the black community obviously makes up a society, a sizable amount of gamers in general. So why wouldn't a game company try to support their own players? You know, like, why wouldn't they? Um, and so I, I highlighted Slack for you guys. Twitch is on here. Uh, Twitch is on here. A statement from the accounts or from the company accounts. Uh, I'm probably gonna be the same standard of white on black, of course. Um, and then do they, do they give any money? I don't want to, I don't want to judge everybody by how much money they give, but, uh, they see it doesn't look like they did did i read that right I'm wrong let me see same for company accounts uh no they did not okay that's fine again they don't have to they don't have to i'm just curious uh youtube susan wachiki may have slaughtered that uh nothing but you know they make 15 billion dollars so it's fine <laughs> They could potentially be putting money into services already to support the black community. Maybe they're already doing that. Maybe we'll just, you know, maybe that's what they're doing and that's fine. I'm not going to judge them for not doing anything today. But we should at least hold these people accountable for what they do in their own games. Right? It is a great example. Uh, in, 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 in League, where everybody, where, where you have so many uh, players, you know, who are think racism was a joke and so they incorporate racist you know slurs into their names somehow using using like creative letters ascii text or whatever um and just in general just like just talking shit just and just talking shit racist shit not normal shit racist shit anyways uh so yeah we've seen tons and tons of uh of support pouring out for you know for everybody actually what's amazon's on here too let me see what does amazon amazon do amazon 
Uh, I, I'm actually more interested in seeing $87.4 billion revenue. And they put a banner at the top of their page. So that's that's pretty prime advertising you know, locations. It was the top of their page. So, you know, maybe that counts as, as contributing. I'm sure some of these companies are contributing. I'm not trying to be a, a total naysayer about everybody. I'm sure some of them are contributing. Uh, but it's really about, like, how they operate and how they, you know, how, how they want to support the black community. And in games, that starts with supporting gamers who are uh, marginalized or or... or you know, just, you know, did they just, just need, that should be treated the same as everybody else, you know, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, so let's see, moving on, this, this is move right on from this. Oh man. Uh, so I did say, yes, yeah, speaking of, speaking of Bobby Kotick. So, uh, this may be, this may be a shock to some of you guys. This may be absolute shock. Hold on. I'm gonna take a drink. Bobby Kotick makes too much money. What? Bobby Kotick makes too much money. Activision Blizzard shareholders upset over CEO Bobby Kotick's compensation. Publisher defends Kotick's pay despite his apparent failure to meet performance targets. So Activision Blizzard, Blizzard has come under fire from some of its own shareholders who argue that CEO Bobby Kotick gets paid too much. Two proxy advisory service firms have recommended that Activision Blizzard shareholders vote against a proposal to remunerate <sighs> Kotick in line <laughs> with previous years. The recommendation was supported by the CTW Investment Group. I actually have that right here. So you can see they did file with the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, basically saying this guy makes too much fucking money uh i'm getting all the curses out of the way because i've locked the door so declan's locked out so i'm a curse i make up for everything i missed um and so yeah so the filing also states that uh and this is you guys are gonna love this part the filing also states that activision blizzard employees typically earn less than one third of one percent of bobby kotick's earnings isn't that insane one third of one percent of his earnings. We've talked about Kotick's earnings uh, on this show before. Uh, when we do like earnings call stuff, we pulled up like CEOs and how much they make and everything. And I think we were mostly pretty much shocked uh, at how many zeros uh, and how many commas were in his uh, annual early earnings. But apparently, his own shareholders are now saying, you know what, maybe that's a bit too much. Uh, they said, we note that three of these objectives are clearly related to human capital management and the, and that Kotick's apparent failure to achieve more than half of the targeted uh, performance strongly suggests that Activision Blizzard's skewed approach to human capital management, lavishing multi-million dollar awards on the CEO as employees face layoffs, uh, needs to be addressed before it manifests in deeper operational problems. What they're saying is... That the employees are going to fucking walk out if you keep on paying yourself hundreds of millions of dollars every year or every couple of years. Sorry. Uh, it says, in the last five years, Activision Blizzard's share price has outperformed the S&P. This is a statement by Blizzard, by the way. Okay, this is their defense. Uh, it, says, it says, over the past five years, Activision Blizzard's share price has outperformed the S&P 500 by more than 120%. And over the past 20 years, under Mr. Kotick's relationship leadership, uh, Activision Blizzard's share price has outperformed the S&P 500 by over 11,000%. So the shareholders should be happy. Fuck them people, man. Who cares about the people that are working for you? Fuck them. This is about making the shareholders happy. Oh, it's 120% over the S&P 500. This is 11,000%. Whoa, look at these numbers. We should be rich. Fuck the, fuck the little people. That's basically what's happening here. Fuck Bobby Kotick, man. I'm so tired of hearing his fucking name and seeing how much money he makes. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Fucking... One third of one percent. One third of one percent. Can you believe that? One third of one percent. What a joke. What an absolute joke. Jesus Christ. I want to read that again. Hold on a second. The employees typically earn. I was curious. Is it average? Is it like the low end? Like maybe the janitor makes one third of one percent. But like typically, what does typically mean? Is that I would say that's probably like on average, maybe median or something like that. Yeah. It's it's that's so many level levels of just ridiculous ah let's see going back to uh what's going on with black lives matter because uh that is the number one thing that's happening right now uh let me see 
there was a video that was that was posted. I really wish I was streaming this because this is this is some serious this is some serious derangement. Uh, so there's a video that's been surfaced that's been uh, uh, making the rounds here. I'm, I'm gonna make you guys watch some of it here. Get the volume up. I've been talking about this for many years, and the events over the past week have been the tipping point. I can no longer, in good conscience, support gaming companies who hate my kind and want to see me dead. I will never buy another gaming console ever again. Why the fuck would I give money to anti-white pieces of shit who want me dead? It's done. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but... years old. I've been gaming, supporting the gaming companies <laughs> for as long as I can remember. Why the fuck would I ever give you a single cent when you are pushing false narratives and rallying in support of violent, rioting looters disguising themselves as a legitimate political movement? No. Wait, where's the word? Thugs. There it is! Oh, I was waiting for that. There it is. Oh, man. Where could he have possibly learned that word? God, I don't know. I know. I know. It's, it's a stretch. It's a stretch, right, guys? It's a stretch. Just because he said thugs in such a way doesn't mean that he's a Trump supporter. Oh, there it is. He got the hat. Oh, oh, man. God, you can't even write this shit. Ah, oh, so I decided. I was like, "Who the fuck is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is the who's Mister Fragile White Gamer?" So I did. I looked to see who he was, uh, and I found his YouTube channel. Uh, it, it wasn't hard to find, of course. It's right right down here. Um, and I decided to go through. I was like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" I went through his history. I'm curious. I'm just curious. How do you get to this point? Obviously, that's how I came across this image, which is posted supposed to his YouTube blog. YouTube has a blog, by the way. Uh, it was posted to his YouTube blog, uh, and I think someone down here got it right. Make anal great again, yes, please. Uh, so yeah, I, just, I went through and just trying to figure out like, what the fuck? Like, how did he? How did we get to this point? And I found, came across some of his other videos. Here we go. You guys do realize. That I have truth on my side. So if you're trying to stop me, you need to realize that truth will always prevail over your lies. It's fucking school shooter. Thank God he's too old for school right now. Jesus Christ, 37 years old. <sighs> Uh, so he says, uh, my video that went viral was vague and to the point. This was intentional. I left out many details to avoid deplatforming. But I promise to elaborate on my positions. I'm sorry, my positions in the future. To those of you in the know, you know what I was talking about. I bet he's talking about Obamagate. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh but it keeps going he's got a patreon he's got a patreon he's got one person subscribe for one dollar he's got uh he's got a reddit account oh guess what whoops that reddit account was banned i wonder why let me go look at the cash and see why was this guy banned why was this guy who comes off as kind of aggressive banned and just because it says liberal decay as the name doesn't mean it's him, right? Well, let me see. Chris, let me see. Oh, 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 look at that. I'm Chris. There it is. Okay, so it is him. Uh, yep, Chris. Okay, so that's him. Yes, I am Chris, the 30-year-old boomer from YouTube. Boy, that seems to really line up. Chris, the 30-year-old boomer from YouTube. Tube. That's very, very on brand of you of you. So he got he got banned on uh, on on Reddit. I wonder why. I love to beat you guys into a coma for stealing my money. I'd imagine that's probably one reason why right there. <sighs> Went through his Twitter account, just curious what he posts. By the way, he posts like a hundred times a day like somebody else. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see this. And so he's 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 mad because uh, Autumn uh, Rhodes, I don't know, it's another streamer, uh, has him blocked, which is why it shows up as unavailable for when you look here. But when I look here, 
Uh, she's actually responding. So she's like, you know, they're going back and forth a little bit. And he says, beat Ninja Gaiden one through three. And I might, or Gaiden, one through three. And I might respect you. Otherwise, shut your trap and get back in the kitchen. I, I checked to see if this tweet was posted in 1967. And it wasn't. It was posted three days ago. Is that crazy? What year is this guy living in? Jesus Christ. Uh, here's the reason why he moved, by the way, because you're wondering. Look at the fucking redneck. Look at the redneck. Just sitting out wow. there. Listen to music I by wish himself. I had that kind of life. Sit here and smoke cigarettes and play loud music and just bug your neighbors. Yeah. Well, guess what, dude? You became that guy. You became that guy. I'm sorry. I'm, you became that guy. Jesus Christ. Christ, man. What a fuck. I don't need to say anything because I think it pretty much speaks for itself. Just cookie cutter, man. <sighs> but I mean, obviously people have things to say against, you know, about getting what's going on right now. People have their own views. Some people are poisoned by other individuals. I mean, the second that guy said thugs, I knew I, I knew exactly what to search for. Um, and it's just it's just ridiculous. It's, seriously, if if you support Hong Kong, <laughs> like, and you don't support this, like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, seriously, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what? Where is your brain even at? I know some of you guys are probably tired of hearing this, but imagine being black <laughs> your whole life and having to deal with this shit every fucking day. And finally, white people are paying attention. Oh my god, it's just uh, yeah, it's just the shit that needs to be said, and we need to talk about it, and we need to maybe like stop ta stop not talking about it. Stop not talking about it. We need to not stop talking about it. That's what I meant. Uh, anyways, so that's enough of that. Yes, last week or so, Randy Pitchford said something dumb. I don't even have my Randy button. Hold on a second. I can find it. Hold on, let's see. Here and then here and then. Oh, Randy. there it is. I got to go back and over here and then I can go. Bah, here's what he said. <laughs> Oh, I miss chat already. If you want to kill some pig cops this weekend, here's the Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary World Tour. Oh man, S super tasteful. But it's Randy for you. I almost did not. I was like, I was like, should I even mention this on the stream? Like, this seems kind of silly. But I wanted an excuse to dig out that that uh, sample and play it. Uh, and other 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 news. Uh, <laughs> Amazon's team-based shooter, Crucible, is retiring two of its three modes. Uh, to to refine the design of core systems without dot 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 compromises. Uh, I've already said my piece on this. Actually, in the tweet, uh, someone says, uh, "No idea this even existed. I forgot that I forgot about it three times on launch day." And you know what? It's funny because it's true. The game came out. Somebody told me the day before. Uh, the game came out, and I I was thinking about what I could possibly stream on the day that it came out, and I, and I totally forgot that it existed. And I'm glad because I don't think I would have put any time into it anyways. Uh, and then lastly, your final piece of the news for today. Uh, I was going to say chat, but me, us, you, Tube. Uh, is that Animal Crossing has been dethroned on the Nintendo eShop by Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, as you can see here. Yep, so 1999, which makes sense, Minecraft Dungeons. I actually did a video on this. You can watch that right here on this channel. Uh, and I go through and I play it. It's actually a lot of fun. It's like actually a lot of fun. I think uh, if you play RPGs, you're looking for something that's kind of relaxing and in the Minecraft world, I think you'll appreciate it. Uh, it has just the right amount of depth for a game that's $19.99. <laughs> also, one of the reasons probably why Animal Crossing is uh, uh, it, it has been dethroned because it's, it's $60. But that's not to say that Animal Crossing is a failure of, of a game by any stretch of the imagination. It is uh, probably one of the biggest games of 2000s, maybe. I mean, like sales numbers and all that stuff are going to be coming out. We're going to see exactly where it's at uh, and how it stands against everything else. But we already know it's the number one selling game on uh, on Switch, I, I believe. <laughs> Isn't that right, chat? <laughs> oh, man. But, but that's it, guys. Uh, I appreciate, I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate you guys. Uh, well, I guess hanging out here with me today. And of course, you know, if you, uh, you know, I'm gonna put a couple links in the, in the description. So you guys, if you want to support uh, Black Lives Matter, whether you're supporting, uh, there's a site, there's a website that I'll post, um, that has a number of different 
uh, uh, GoFundMes and change.org petitions, all kinds of stuff. So if you want to go through, if that's all you can do, then you know what? That's enough. It's better than nothing. Uh, signing your name to something, donating. I've donated. I've signed things. Uh, I've done whatever I could. You know, I've I've been trying to to you know keep the message alive on Twitter by sharing what's actually happening on the scene. Uh, all the scenes, plural. Because these protests are happening everywhere, and I do believe that the protesters are being harassed by police forces. We have plenty of video proof of that. I'm sure some people maybe do not agree with that that's the sentiment. Maybe you'll find an example of a protester being uh, aggressive. Perhaps. Maybe you will. Maybe you will. And then I'll counter with fucking 15 clips of cops being uh, aggressive. This is why we call them. Uh, that's that's why they're calling police riots now. They're police riots. That's effectively what they are. Oh man. Just sad. Just makes me sad. The whole thing makes me sad. <sighs> but that's it. My name is Mike B. A. K. Phony. Thank you so much for tuning in the news. I will see you guys later. Ooh.